We have got a real treat for you today. If you've been watching Huge Homes with Hugh Dennis on Channel 4, then you might just recognise this property from a recent episode. It's now on the market with Fine & Country for a cool 3.5 million, and they, along with the vendor Trevor, have invited me inside today to take a look around. home is huge. There are eight bedrooms and six bathrooms set across, would you believe it, three floors. Now from the outside you don't realise the sheer scale of this property and that's because much of the living space is underground in the basement. So let's head there first. This is certainly one of the most unique homes that I've ever come across. At every turn there is something new to discover, including this huge bespoke staircase. And it was actually built entirely on site, brought down here and put together and it's the perfect grand entrance down onto the basement. Just behind us there is an area that can be configured as one of the sitting rooms. It's got access into a gorgeous little courtyard. There's also a library area behind us, but my favourite reception room is just through here, so let's take a look. This level is a bit of a labyrinth. I do wish I was handed a map at the bottom of the stairs, but this is the formal reception room and it's called the Venetian room for obvious reasons. There's lovely natural light flooding in from French doors leading out to the Abbey courtyard. The Abbey courtyard was dug out along with the basement and I love the pillars in this room and the marble fireplace, but I wonder, will the Venetian theme continue? Something tells me that there's more themes to discover. the Venetian room is the first of the bedrooms and this one feels very much like I'm in a kind of hotel suite maybe in a castle or something fancy like that we've got baroque mirrors paneling but my favorite part of this eclectic mix of design is this octagonal skylight <music> This might look like another fake door, but it actually leads to my favourite part in the house. So here we are in this open plan room, which combines the dining area, a seating area and the kitchen. And it's in a Gothic style, reminiscent of an old church, which I guess is where the Abbey style courtyard comes in. The owner has spent the best part of 60 years fully transforming this home from the bungalow that once stood here and I think he's done a fantastic job of creating something almost palatial. These brick pillars act not only as structural necessities but I think that they make a really gorgeous focal point for the design of this room. And something else which is recurring throughout the home are these frescoes, like this one just above me. This mural features throughout the home in different paintings, they're all hand painted as well and I'll see if I can point out a few more as we go. I just love the bay window, how cosy would it be sat in there watching the rain outside with a lovely book. But the best place to sit in this whole room, in my opinion, is just behind me. Just look at these thrones flanking a regal fireplace. Nothing in this property has been done by halves. There is, like I said, a kitchen in this room as well, just behind me, tucked away in the corner, behind an area that feels very transitional, as if it could be a breakfast bar in the morning and then an actual bar in the evening. Access from this room as well, we do have the principal suite just up a metal staircase, so let's check it out.
We're at the top of the spiral staircase now in the principal suite and we're met straight away by another gorgeous mural. This one's kind of ethereal in its design and I love the French feel in here with the canopy and the panelling. It's really very special. Also in this suite we have an ensuite which has a wonderful skylight above. There's also a separate dressing area and French doors out to the Abbey ruins. The recreation of these Abbey walls is just fantastic. You really would think that this home had been built right in the centre of a ruined cathedral, but we are in fact in the centre of Raysbury, just outside of Windsor. Raysbury is located in the Royal Borough of Windsor and Maidenhead on the east bank of the River Thames, just 18 miles from central London, with Sunny Meads Railway Station, built in 1927, taking you to London Waterloo in less than an hour. is in a one acre plot and all of the land has a very magical quality about it. I can imagine children playing around on the different levels and sections, discovering new hiding places on every visit. It's got a kind of fairy tale feel to it. You enter up a long cobbled drive to a gated entrance. There is a moat out the front, even a turret. The space is huge. It feels much larger than an acre, but there's even more to see inside. So let's go back to the ground floor. We come in through lovely arched windows into a bright and open dining room or as the vendor calls it, a morning room. So we've already seen one bedroom on this floor, the principal suite. There are three more just the other side of the property. My favourite one is the one right at the end with tiled flooring and a great en suite. But just through this door, there is a really large office area with access onto a patio with great views of the pond below. We've got one more floor to go, so follow me up these stairs. Wow, it is as if I've entered a whole different house up here. It's so bright and white and almost modern by contrast to the very traditional basement we have downstairs. These ceilings are full of glass, full of light, and I think they're just perfect. Now there's two bedrooms up here, both en suite again, but I want to come through this bedroom to find the eucalyptus roof terrace. I'm truly blown away by this property. It's unlike anything I've ever seen before. At every turn, you're greeted by the truly unexpected. Now, Finding Country posts new property tours just like this one to their YouTube channel every single week. That's the Finding Country YouTube channel. So like this video, comment down below. I'm keen to know what you thought about this property. And don't forget to join me next time somewhere else in the UK.